Hey guys, what's up? So welcome to a quick and dirty guide on overclocking. Now, the actual board I'm using and, and CPU that I'm using is the Intel Core i5-3570K uh, quad-core processor, uh, Ivy Bridge as well, so it's famous for heating up very quickly. Um, I'm using the Z77X uh, UD5H motherboard from Gigabyte, uh, socket uh, 1155 obviously, and uh, I'm using a Corsair H100i uh, in push um, to, to cool it. So. To overclock, obviously, you're going to need to go to the BIOS. Now, you can use um, some quick OC programs, but I don't recommend them at all. Uh, basically, you're just going to turn on your system, like I'm about to do now, and then press whatever key it is to get into your BIOS. Now, on the on the Z77X UD5H, that is the delete key, so I'm just going to keep tapping it here until I can be assured that we're going into the BIOS, because my monitor takes the piss to tell me when it's actually in the BIOS. And there we go. So right here, as you can see, we have the Gigabyte um, UEFI BIOS now. Got cut on my arm. Um, now you can either have it like this, or we can click F1 here and go into the 3D BIOS. Now to do the 3D BIOS, um, I'm actually going to lower defaults here. Uh, there you go. All right, for the 3D BIOS, it's very simple. You literally can just click System Tuning, then just ramp this up to. Let's, let's say we're going to try and hit 4.5 GHz, so on a Corsair H100i, that is easy. 4.5 GHz on a 3570K, easy peasy. You can literally put that there, save and quit, go back, run Prime 95, check out your temps, and that is literally your overclock. Uh, but if you don't want to do it like that, I'm going to go back down to 3.4, and you want to do it if you're on like a proper, <laughs> a proper motherboard uh, BIOS, we can go into advanced frequency settings here, Go down to advanced CPU core features. I'm sorry if I'm going too fast. I'll go back over it in a minute. Then I'm going to go down to these turbo ratio cores. Now what this is going to do is it means that your, your CPU is not always going to be clocked at 4.5 GHz. It's going to be clocked normally and it's going to turbo to these uh, the speeds. So I'm going to type in 45 for all of them. 45, 45, 45, 45. The, the turbo uh, power limit in watts, I'm going to put that as 250. And the core current limit in amps, we're going to put that as 250 as well. And we can turn off the uh, the thermal monitor, because we don't really need that, because we'll be checking our temps anyway. Thanks for that email. We've just commented. Thank you very much. I actually quite like comments. Next, after that, we're going to go uh, to advanced voltage settings, CPU core voltage control. Now, the CPU V-core, you can leave that uh, alone. I'll keep hitting the camera. I'm sorry about that. I don't know if it makes too much difference. Um, you can leave that on auto, because that means that it's going to... Um, it's not going to always be running at 1.35 volts, it's going to be going up and down. So just leave that on auto. Um, the CPU PLL, though, you can put that as 1.65 volts, because uh, that will give you a little bit cooler temperatures, because that is what this overclock really needs. And apart from that, that is pretty much it. CPU temp at the moment is 40 degrees, but the reason for that is my big halogen light uh, in the corner. So on a Corsair H100i, I'll repeat, is what I'm using right now. This overclock uh, is quick and dirty and should work straight away. So we save an exit setup and go into Windows. Now I'm going to actually do this all in one shot because uh, I might chop it up a little bit just to, you know, sort of make the video a little bit shorter. Um, it's 3 minutes 43 long and we've already done the overclock. So, <clears throat> you know, it might be a little bit long, it might not be. Crap. Go F12 quickly. I forgot about that. Do it into Windows because I'm running Hackintosh so I have Windows on a separate partition. I just want to point out before I get anybody saying it when it loads up, uh, I'm not running a, uh, a pirate copy of Windows. It's because this is the hard drive from my PC that I bought um, off a catalog company, uh, and then I built my own one. So I just basically pulled out the Hitachi hard drive, whacked it in here, and it doesn't recognise it. So that's basically why. So start in Windows. Is it? No, it's not frozen. Okay, I was going to say. And there we go, we have a nice little splashy screen there. The colours don't look great, but YOLO. Uh, look, cancel here. And we are booted into Windows 7. Okay, so that's a good sign out of that <laughs> straight away. It means the volts aren't too high for the uh, the CPU, it, it likes it. I'd recommend also, if you're memory overclocking, if you've overclocked your memory from, say, 1600 to 2000 MHz or something like that, please just don't. Uh, just leave it, go back and... Um, just put it back to 
uh, profile one because 4.5 gigahertz is pretty easy but if you're going to go any higher than that you need to have it uh, on stock um, stock speeds so now we've booted up into the windows into the windows we're going to open up core temp or something anything to measure your temps uh, of your gpu cores or cpu cores sorry now one of my cores is higher than all the rest all the time um, when overclocked i mean core one which is this core here that one is always a bunch hotter than the rest of them sometimes even 10 degrees when i actually stress test so you can see the frequency it's registered 4.5 gigahertz uh, but now it's just done the clock itself again because it's just realized when it's booted so i'm going to open up prime 95 which is my stressing uh program of choice choice now you're gonna have to run this for hours literally i left it on for about 24 hours one day a matter of electricity but still you need to because uh, if it's not 100 percent stable then literally it's it's not good for it so i'm going to run a small fft test for threads if you can't really see then run it in 1080p but i'll zoom in for a bit there I'll just auto oh, you know what i don't like auto how about i do it myself there you go you're gonna run four threads of prime 95 and hit OK. And we're going to go into the top there. You can see the temps. She's going to pull it up a bit there. My temps I'm getting are 72 degrees on core 0, 80 degrees, 78 degrees, and 73 degrees. You may think you may get that and you may hit like 88 degrees and think, oh yeah, that's fine. It's not hitting 90 degrees or anything. Leave it. Just leave it on for a bit. I can feel the heat coming off my core. So if you want to do that now. Leave it for a bit, it will go up. And I'm not going to say it's not going to, it will go up quite a lot. And um, <clears throat> my one, I ran at 4.6 gigahertz and it hit um, core one, anyway, which is my hottest core, hit 93 degrees. That's not safe. So you could probably scale it back then, but I think I have too many volts in it. I'm not 100%. But my max has been 75, 83 or 84 sorry 81 and 77 degrees that is a perfectly good overclock it's simple as that so this is on my z77x ud5h motherboard 3570k with the corsair h100i with the quiet setting on the fans and um and yeah all of that jazz if you do have much higher temps you're running the same cooler the same motherboard the same cpu if you have much higher temps make sure you put all of the settings that i told you to in the bios make sure you put them exactly right make sure that um, make sure that your fans are actually running at the RPM you think they're running, which is sounds like a stupid thing, but it actually uh, will matter. If you've got them running at like uh, 900 RPM instead of like 1450 RPM, then that is a big thing. Um, as you can see, that now it's got it to 86 degrees, before it was about 79, so you know, it, it's, a big, it's a big difference. So, yeah, after that, if it's still boiling hot, then you're going to have to reapply your uh, CPU cooler because if it's much much hotter than that and it's a course H100 or H100i or any really good reputable uh, CPU cooler you've probably put it on wrong so that's pretty much it that's the quick and dirty I'm still running Prime 95 here now once you've done this you're gonna want to run it for a long time so like literally hours about seven hours uh, at least I recommend you run it for 12 to 24 hours to make sure that it's 100% stable, find your max temp that you're ever going to get. Prime 95 is so artificial, you're not actually ever going to hit those temps doing real life real life um, programs. But Okay guys, so I thought I'd throw this in here. Uh, I wanted to do that video all on take, but I thought I'd throw this in here to tell you or show you the uh, kind of effects of the overclocking. So you probably already know why you do it if you're clicking on this overclocking guide video. But I'm just going to run Geekbench here, which is basically what I use to compare my, my Hackintosh to other Macs, so run the 64-bit uh, Intel one. Now I've, I've got both the scores there. I just touched the screen one, but I've got both the scores here uh, of when I'm not running screen flow, which is going to slow it down quite a lot. But I've got both the scores there, so uh, we can actually show you the proper scores compared to uh, real Macs in quotations. So normally it takes 36 seconds, is what I'll, I can tell you. Is when you're running this unoverclocked. On this system, 3570K with 8 gigs of 1333 MHz RAM, it would take 30, uh, 36 seconds. Running it here with ScreenFlow running, of course, we get 13,504. So that's with ScreenFlow running, so I'm not really going to take that into account. Okay, so here we go. This is the non overclock, totally like, like a literally just built system, powered it on. I get 10,840 Geekbench score, which is pretty meh. Okay, so we're on Primate Lab, so we can click 64-bit benchmarks to kind of compare this against 
scores of real max. So we're going to open up this here. Non overclock, we've got 10,840. That is comparable to the Med 2010 4 core Mac Pro, uh, a 17 inch early 2011 uh, MacBook Pro, and a late 2012 27 inch baseline uh, iMac. So they're the kind of things that are around that speed. Now when I actually overclocked, if we just open this up here, I got I got another 3.2 thousand Geekbench score. That is, that for, for free, that is basically amazing. So 14,000, let's just check what that's near. It's right near the end of the scale, it's in the top 10. We are almost at a 2010 8 core Mac Pro. So that's two of the processors that we saw earlier, that's two of those 8 cores, 14,120. We are above the uh, the iMac maxed out late 2012. We are above the maxed out MacBook Pro Retina. Uh, we are above basically any consumer Mac. We are above any consumer Mac, just with a bit of overclocking. So, easy as that, we've got some free performance, and that is why you do overclocking. But that is basically it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like uh, if it helped you out. If you need any extra help, comment down below or private message me. That's fine either way. And subscribe for future videos.